All right, so let's talk standard scores, AKA Z scores. So I will use those terms interchangeably. Please make sure you realize that I am referring to the same thing when I refer to the standard score or the Z score. So some people get confused if they see this notation, which is what you see in most textbooks. So I usually, I don't even re write it out in that format. I usually just, remind you of what each thing is representing. So X is representing some observation, mu is our mean, and sigma is our standard deviation. So to this formula for finding standard score or Z score is observation minus mean all over the standard deviation. All right, so a few pieces of information you need to be aware of. So. We're going to use standard scores. We want to be able to compare things that don't necessarily, that aren't being scored or done similarly. So this gives us a way, lack, for lack of a better way of explaining this, is this gives us a way to compare things that are kind of considered possibly like apples and oranges. We standardize these scores so that we can make those comparisons. And the best example that I can think of to give you is if we were to compare, if you were to take the ACT and also the SAT, then you can determine what your standardized score is for each of those. In other words, where your score lies in relation to the mean, how many standard deviations above or below the mean your score is. And so then you can make a comparison to decide, did you score better and do better on the ACT or the SAT? Okay, um, you'll see a few examples of how this is used here shortly. The other thing to realize is that you can use standard scores in place of using the empirical rule. However, the main reason why we are learning about this is that you can't always use the empirical rule. For the empirical rule, we have to be a nice, pretty, nice, even integers one or two or three standard deviations above or below the mean. But there are a whole bunch of values that could be out there that are not nice, pretty integer values above or below the mean, right? We could have a fraction. We could be a quarter of a standard deviation above the mean or 2.78 standard deviations below the mean. So we still need to be able to do some work on those types of values, hence we use the standard score. Okay, so those are some things you need to be aware of. The Z score tells us the number that it gives us is, a, is how many standard deviations above or below the mean a particular value lies. Okay, so there are some properties of standard normal distributions in these Z scores that I kind of want to explain. And then we'll look at some examples, kind of visually and mathematically. All right, so let's go through these properties. Let's talk about these properties. This first one, it says, the cumulative area is close to zero for Z scores that are close to negative 3.49. Well, a Z score of negative 3.49 means the negative tells us we are below the mean, and negative 3.49 means we are almost three and a half standard deviations below the mean. So we would be about right there. So hopefully that should make sense to you that if they're talking about the cumulative area, the cumulative area implies that we are talking about the area from as far to the left as possible up to this particular location. And I'm kind of trying to draw that in just so that you can kind of visually see where that would be. But essentially what this is saying is that there's nothing there. There are not going to be any values. Okay. Um, secondly, it's saying the cumulative area increases as the z-scores increase. Well, that should make sense. If we have a z-score of, I don't know, let's, as an example, if we have this z-score of negative 0.5, um, then obviously our cumulative area is from that particular location and lower. So it would be all of this, right? 
then if we were to compare that to a z-score of, say, 2.3, then that's giving us an area from this particular location and everything lower. So obviously that cumulative area, in other words, the area from as far left as possible up to that particular location, it's going to have to be bigger. That's what that property is telling us. The cumulative area for z is equal to 0 is 0 0.5. So z is equal to 0. If we have a standard score of 0, think about how we're going to get that. That would mean that if we take the observation minus the mean, that we get 0. In other words, the distance between the observation and the mean is 0. In other words, it has to be right here at z is equal to, right there at the mean. In other words, z is equal to 0. And so our area, our cumulative area from that point would be from as low as possible up to our mean, which we know is equal to 50% or 0.5 if we're writing as, as the decimal. And then it's also telling us lastly here, cumulative area is close to one for Z scores that are close to 3.49. So guys, that's saying we are way up here, right? And if we were to find the cumulative area of all of this, and I'm trying to color over other colors, so it's not look, working very well, but I think you get the general idea. I'm shading in all of this. The area is going to be close to what we know the full area of any density curve is going to be, and it's going to be equal to 1. All right, let's look at some examples of how we actually plug into this formula. And then we'll talk about what the Z scores, how we use the table, and look at some other visuals of this. All right, we know by the notation here that in these particular examples, it's saying the mean is 100, our standard deviation is 6. So then it's saying, find what the standard score would be for a student who gets a 95. So 95 is our observation, right? And we want to figure out what's the Z score or the standard score. Where does that lie in comparison to this mean and standard deviation? So to find our Z score, we're doing 95, which is our observation minus 100 all over our standard deviation. And so we get, we actually want to write these always as a decimal, and we want to go two places for that decimal, always. Always two places, and we round. So in this particular case, we find that z is equal to negative 0.83. Visually, I want you to think about what that's saying. What that's telling us is that this score of 95, we can't use the empirical rule to figure this out, that z-score of negative 0.83 means we are at this particular location about right there. Now, it's not asking for any prop percentages or proportions. It was just asking for the z-score. So we're going to look at a few examples of that type, and then we will move on and do couple other examples. Standard score for a student who gets a 110, that's the observation. So once again, observation minus mean all over standard deviation. We're going to plug that into our calculator. And in this case, we find that that's at 1.67. So that means it's positive. It's going to be to the right of our mean. So it is one and two thirds standard deviations above the mean. So that's pretty darn good score, All right? And then next, a score of 90. For our Z score, we would do 90 minus our 100 all over 6, and we get our Z score. In this case, it's negative 1.67. And lastly here, if we get a score of 115 minus 100 all over 6, we get a z-score of 2.5.
We know that would be considered unusual because it's beyond two standard deviations from the mean in either direction. Okay, all right, onward. That's one basic type of problem. The next type of problem that you're going to see is we're gonna work backwards. So it's saying find the actual score. In other words, we're gonna find our observation and they give us the standard score. So remember our formula says Z is equal to observation minus mean all over standard deviation. So in this particular case, we know the Z score, we know one, negative 1.35 1 is equal to, what we don't know is what the actual score or the observation is, but we know we want our mean to be 100 all over six. So think mathematically of what we would do to solve that. It means we're gonna have to multiply both sides by six. And then we would have to add 100, right? So we multiply six times negative 1.35 and then we add 100. And so for that score, we find that our Z score is equal to, our actual score, excuse me, is 91.9. And for a standard score of 0.87, we know that's going to be a value that is around 106 because one standard deviation above the mean is at uh, 106. So let's figure out exactly those. So if we have our Z score of 0.87, is equal to some observation we don't know minus our mean all over standard deviation. I was planning on using this color kind of as a highlight. Sorry, it's not the brightest. It's a little hard to read, I apologize. So we're gonna multiply by that six, we're gonna add the 100. On this particular case, we find that our observation, our actual score would be 105.22. So as I pointed out, we know it should have been pretty close to 106. We are not going to look at 7 or 8 right now. Um, we're going to talk about those early this next week. All right, so onward, I want to talk to you. I want to show you some examples of how we use the table and find the percentages from the table. So I'm going to share some other examples that I have made up. They are not on your note guide. I'm going to write on this next page, which is an added slide. So you're going to need to find some room where you have a little bit of extra space that you can write down these examples. Okay, so here's our, our table. Um, this should look somewhat familiar to some of you. You saw this um, last semester, but for those of you who did not, don't worry. I'm going to show you how this works. I do want you to notice a little bit about how the how the table is set up. So you can kind of think of this as a line right here in the middle. This is where our mean is. If you notice along this left-hand side, it's showing you z-scores. And these are all negative because they are lower or less than the mean. And these are your z-scores that are positive and are greater than our mean. Um, we move across this column for our second decimal place beyond the decimal, so our hundredths place. So I'll show you how this works here in just a second. Let me change colors here for what these problems are actually going to ask us to do. Okay, so if we use as an example, if you notice in this particular example, we're saying mean is 60, standard deviation is 3, and then I want you to notice I have worded each of these questions a little bit differently. They all mean you're going to do the same process that we're going to talk through here, but the wording is a little bit different, so I just want you to see that. Okay, so if you notice on this particular one, it's saying find the proportion of values that are below 58. So that means we are given the observation. I want you to kind of have a visual of what this is saying. So 60 would be here, and we're going up three, and we're going down three. So we'd be at 57 and 54 and 51, 
and 63 and 66 and 69. So in this particular question, it's saying find the proportion of values that are more or less, we're right around at this particular value, but we want to go from that particular place and everything lower. So what percent of values are in that particular area? That's another way of wording that same question. So we're going to find our z-score. That's first on the list. So z is equal to observation minus mean all over standard deviation. And we get a z-score of negative 0.67. So that's saying we're two-thirds of a standard deviation below the mean. So shading, you can see where that is. If we go up to the table, what we are looking for then, let me change my highlighter color. So we are looking for negative 0.67. So if you notice here, we're at negative 0.6. We've got to keep kind of moving over into our table until we get to the intersection of the negative 0.6 and the 0 0.07. So this value here is what we are looking for, which tells us if we change, if we convert it to a, a percent, then that's saying 25.14%. Or you could keep it as the decimal, 0.2514. But yes, we always want to go, if we keep it as a decimal, we always want to go four places. If we change it to that percent, we're going two places after that decimal. All right, find the area above 64. So visually, let's think about what that's saying. 64 is about right here, and we're finding the area from here and everything higher. So that's this part. Now, keep in mind, the way our table is set up, when we find our z-score, we're finding from that particular location and lower so we're going to have a little bit of work we have to do after that. Oops. All right. So observation minus mean all over standard deviation. So we find that we get a z-score of 1.33. Now, because it's above, remember the way this table is set up, it is giving us the values at any given location or lower. So then if we are looking for values that are above or higher, we've got a little bit more work we have to do. So I'll point that out here in just a second. So we're at 1.3 here, and we have to move over. We're looking for the column and the, the intersection of those two so that we're at truly at the 1.33. Now, let's think about this. That's saying 90% of the values lie at this particular location and lower. But we are supposed to find the values for this above that particular value. So here's where we're going to have to take our 100 minus whatever this value was, what was it? 90.82. So 90.82, what does that give us? That gives us 9.18%. So keep in mind, remember when we have values that are saying above or longer than or larger than or greater than, anything to that effect, implying that we are going from a particular location and higher that we have to subtract from one or 100, depending on whether we write it as a decimal or a percent. All right. And then last example here, we're going between two values. So we're, we're looking for what percent of values are between 55 and 65. So 55 would be about right here. 65 would be about right here. So it's all of this in between here. And I'm not going to actually shade all of that, but you can see what I would shade there. 
So we're actually going to have to find two different z-scores. So we're going to have to find the, the z-score for this 55. And that z-score um, is negative 1.67. And then if we do the z-score then for this 65, we get 65 minus 60 all over 3 and we get a z-score of positive 1.67. So we're one and two-thirds standard deviations above and below the mean. So we're going to try to figure out that particular area. So if we're doing something between, we want to find those two particular values in our table. So 1.67 means we're going here. We're going to move over, find our intersection here. And that gives us a 0.9525 minus, if we go to negative 1.67, we're at 0 0.0475. So we want to subtract that. So minus 0.0475. If we subtract those, we find that we are at either 0 0.905 or 90.5%. All right. And that should make sense to you guys. Think about it. We are almost two standard deviations above and below the mean, and we know through the empirical rule that that would be approximately 95% of the data. So that 90%, 90.5% is pretty accurate. All right, last page of notes. We're gonna look at just a couple of these examples. I've kind of put some marks in there just to kind of help you. Once again, I'm kind of showing you a little bit different notation to help you with these. Um, and it's just to give you a little bit more practice with the table. Um, I'm not going to move back to the table while I'm recording because it does wonky things with the recording. So you're going to have to look at a separate location for your table. So we're just going to do a few of these examples. So if you notice what the directions are saying, it says shade and find the area with the following conditions. I'm going to skip that first one. I've kind of put a mark where it would be and then you would go to your table. So you would actually, let me go ahead and draw it in. It's here, it's pretty quick to do. So less than 1.23, so that's one and a quarter standard deviations above the mean because it's positive, and it would imply all of this there. Um, and you can go to your table and you would find that it's 0.8907 or 89.07%. I want to focus on this greater than, though, because if you notice on this one, it's saying greater than negative 0.73. So I've drawn where that would be approximately. But we're looking for, because it's a greater than, remember, our work is a little bit different. So it's all of this that we are looking for. So think about what that's telling us we've got to do. We've got to go to our table and look at where negative 0.73 is. And then we're doing 1 minus that value. So we're doing 1 minus 0.2327, so we get 0.7673, or 76.73%. And then that last one looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? It's similar to what we had already done, so let's do this one. So between z is equal to negative 0.35, so that's here, about just one-third of a standard deviation below the mean, and then this 1.89 means we are almost two standard deviations above the mean, right? So it's all of this particular area. So we would go to our table, and we are looking for the 1.89 and as our z-score and looking at the corresponding proportion. And that gives us a z-score, I'm sorry, a, a proportion of 0 0.9706. And then we're going to subtract from that 
the proportion that we find at negative 0.35, which is 0.3632. We subtract those and we get 0.6074 or 60.74%. All right, it is your turn to practice and show me what you know. Have fun.